So welcome guys, it's Andy here from D6 Evolution and today is our Imperial Fist review. Now, this is a super strong codex and if you're an Imperial Fist um, player, you're gonna be really happy with this one. Now, uh, if you're new to the channel, D6 Evolution is all about 40K tactics and we're aiming to make you guys better 40K players. We do regular tactics videos, so to be sure to check some of those out and I'll uh, put a link down below to our latest tactics video, uh, which is all about assault phase shenanigans. Now, on with the review. Um, now. It's a slightly different style review than you're used to on this channel. We're going to be doing um, a more condensed review, trying to get across what are the relevant points, what are the competitive stratagems and combos in this codex without going through absolutely everything. Um, with that being said, I'm going to try and put up um, all the rules as I go along, um, just so if, you're, if you want to see absolutely everything, you'll be able to see it as you go along. Sound good? Right, so let's dive in. Um, so, Imperial Fist. This codex is really good. It's not quite up there with the pre-nerfed Iron Hands, but it is it is seriously strong. It's got a really nice mix of anti-horde and uh, anti-tank in there, which is, which is a perfect balanced list, I think. So, um, anyone who doesn't know the Imperial Fist chapter tactic, it is, um, ignores cover and you get on your bolt weapons exploding sixes which doesn't sound that that great but actually if you're getting an extra hit on a six um if you only usually hit on a three four five on six um that's 25 percent extra hit so i think it's i think it's pretty good whether that's better than stealthy and master artisan i'm not entirely sure but it's still really good and i guess it really depends on what sort of build you're going for with your imperial fists so that is the basics uh, the Chat, the the tactic for going pure is massive. You get plus one damage on your heavy weapons in Devi Doctrine. And as Devastator Doctrine is the first Doctrine you get, you're getting it from the start of the game, as opposed to White Scars where they get it in turn three when half their army's already dead. So turn one, you're doing massive amounts of damage. Um, and I think actually as a game mechanic, it makes it incredibly hard to balance because it's going to disproportionately affect... Uh, weapons with high rates of fire like assault cannons versus you know, like a last cannon with one shot um, so there, there are some clear winners from this <laughs> from this uh, this chapter tactics as we'll call it um, so thunder fire cannons becoming two damage against vehicles ridiculous stalker bolt rifles um, anything with a ridiculously high rate of fire so your assault cannons your heavy bolters um, they're, they're all suddenly becoming absolutely ridiculous if you put them on some of those space marine flyers like the storm hawks um, you know, for 165 points you're getting 18 shots which do which do do, do minus 2 ap with 2 damage that, that is ludicrous so you're getting ridiculously good anti-tank and don't even get me started we're going to be talking a lot more about the bolter centurions later because that is the all-star unit in this codex let me tell you that oh and there's some other things out there like uh fire raptors you've got the sakaran punisher as well which again you know for just over 160 points it's just effectively the, these some of these units have doubled in power because of this chapter tactic um whereas some of the other ones will have just got a little bit better so, yeah, it's really, 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 really good. I can't I, <laughs> um, emphasize this one enough. It's, yeah, it's probably one of the, it's probably the strongest chapter tactic out there, I think. Um, right, so we've got, we've got two characters with this book. Um, you've got Lysander, which I'm not really going to touch on because he's not very good. And you've got Torgadon. Um, so, <laughs> he, he's quite good, actually. Um, he is... Um, He's in Gravis armor, he's toughness five, he's got seven wounds. He's got this giant power fist, which is um, strength 12, and he gets six attacks when he charges in. Um, now he gets plus one to wound and plus one to, plus one damage when he attacks a vehicle as well. So he, he's pretty much wounding anything on the game on twos uh, with a flat four damage power fist, which is, which is ridiculous. And he gives plus one to, plus one to hit, um, to to a unit so Centurion Devastators we're going to keep coming back to this because these are going to be the all star here uh, and he gets reroll ones so he's going to be making a unit hit on twos re-rolling ones I think that's really really good 
Right, so let's kick up with the stratagems. Now, these stratagems are really cool in this book. Uh, and I want you to bear in mind, there's a couple of things you've got to think about before you start applying these stratagems. Um, I want you to think about a unit of six Centurion Devastators with heavy bolters and hurricane bolters. So they're gonna put out 18 shots each. Those heavy bolters are gonna be two damage each. Now, if you take them as Siege Breaker Cohort from Vigilus, um, they've got a, I think it's called Seismic Devastation um, stratagem where essentially they can get mortal wounds on a six plus that's pretty good when you when you're shooting 108 shots that's going to start getting a lot of uh, mortal wounds on a six plus to wound now you've got a you've got a stratagem in the codex for plus one to wound so now they're going to be doing it on five pluses so when you consider this unit with um with the character that's organ can hit on twos you can re-roll ones you're going to be getting a lot of hits sixes are going to explode as well so you're going to get an extra hit from that um, you could even throw in later on, we're going to talk about the Bolter Discipline for an extra hit. Um, and fives do mortal wounds. You're going to be getting somewhere in the region of 30 to 40 mortal wounds on a on an Imperial Knight, say. Plus the normal damage on top of that. So you're going to be getting 40 or 50 damage on this Imperial Knight. <laughs> it's absolutely insane. Um, maybe I can see this getting changed to an unmodified uh, an unmodified six to wound, but as it stands at the moment, six Centurion Devastators is utterly, utterly broken in this codex. Now, next up, if you think, hey, I'll just tie up this unit of Centurion Devastators. Well, you've got a 2CP uh, stratagem to convert um, all of their guns into pistols. So um, rapid fire six becomes pistol six. Those heavy bolters become three shots each as well. Um, so even in combat, these guys can still shoot nearly 100%. You know, they're going to be shooting 72 shots as opposed to 108. So still ridiculous. So as soon as someone tries to try point you, you just kill them all. So that is that is absolutely amazing. Um, the other, next one to talk about is bolter drill. So you get an extra exploding six. Um, so your chapter tactic, you get an extra hit on a six plus, And now you get another additional hit on a six plus. That was in the old codex, but it cost 1 CP. They have now put it up to 2 CP. I don't really know if it's worth 2 CP, but if you really want something dead, and that unit of centurions to kill them already, then, you know, fair enough. If you want an extra few mortal wins on top of that, that's fine. Now, there's multiple ways to make your units more survivable in this book. Um, the first one I want to talk about is bolstered defences. No, so 2 CP. At the start of your movement phase, um, you can increase your save by one until the next time you move. Um, so that's really big. So that can actually apply all game. If you put that that key Death Star unit in the middle of the board um, and just, you know, in, unless you move them again, those Centurions are on a zero up saving cover. That is that that is good. Um, the next thing you can think about is you can use the Shield Unwavering, which I think I think cost two CP as well. Um, again, you get plus one save, plus one attack, um, but you've got to use that at the end of your turn. Um, so it's not quite a reactive strategy, but if you know your opponent needs to kill that Death Star, again, you can but you can put it down another minus one armor. It's absolutely stupid. Um, and you've got another one here where you, you can take a Warlord trait where you can do, um, you can essentially ignore minus one AP when you're in cover. So again, so you've got three ways of increasing your armor save as well as being in cover. So you can get plus four to your armor save. <laughs> so you can get yourself down to minus two. Um, it costs a lot of CP. It's probably not worth doing, but it's there if you need it. So the relics. The, well the relics in this book, mm, I'll put them up on the screen here so you can have a look. Um, honestly, guys, they're not the best things out there. Um, they're, they're no iron stone. They're, they're, they're just okay. Um, the only one I'd really consider taking would be the... Uh, of the uh, of the uh, imperial fist specific ones is you've got one to reroll uh, wounds of one, which is quite good if you put that on a captain um, or or a chap if you put that on a captain, made him a chapter master, and then gave him the reroll ones to wound as well. You've you've got a pretty effective little buff master in there, um, so I think that's probably worth doing um, in in certain builds definitely. Um, 
So we've got the Crimson Fists, which are actually a successor chapter of the Imperial Fists. Um, and so they get all the keywords of Imperial Fists. They can use all of the stratagems uh, that Imperial Fists can. Uh, they don't get to use the Imperial Fist relics. They get their own Crimson Fist relics, which some of them are actually quite good. And they get two specific stratagems as well. So their generic chapter tactic is that um, if they're shooting things with five more models in them than their own unit, then they're going to get plus one to hit. So that's huge against things like Orcs. Um, and they also get the, the standard exploding sixes that Imperial Fists get as well. So that, that's really nice. Now they get two stratagems which are good. They get reroll wounds versus Orcs. Now in a meta which is you know still largely dominated by Orcs in certain areas, um, plus um, reroll wounds against Orcs for one CP, that is absolutely massive. Um, the other one that they get is they get plus one to hit versus characters. Um, now, things like Imperial Knights are characters, Lord Discordance are characters, I think that's pretty huge. Um, so you, you're getting, you know, you're getting a, not, a lot of nice buffs there. And given that the Crimson Fist can take Imperial Fist stratagems, I don't know what you guys think on this. Um, the Vigilist Detachment, um, to, get, to, make, to make it a Siege Breaker cohort, the Imperial Fist one, it's actually technically tied to the Imperial Fist keyword and there's a stratagem to use it. Um, so technically... I think you could make the Crimson Fist into an Imperial Fist Siegebreaker cohort. I'm not entirely sure on that, but um, I'll, I'll put the stuff up on the screen. Let me know what you think about that. Um, you've also got Pedro Cantor, which is a generic chapter master. He's okay. He's nothing special to write home about. I'll stick his stats up on the screen as well, so you guys can have a look at that. Now, the Crimson Fists have an awesome little relic. They have a cheeky Power Fist, which is flat three damage and doesn't suffer any minuses to hit. I think that's pretty sweet. If you put that on a jump pack captain, he's gonna be doing a lot of damage. Okay, the next thing I wanna talk about is the psychic powers. Um, now, again, yeah, they're not particularly good, to be honest, guys. Um, there's nothing that I'd be going, oh my God, you definitely need to take. The two which are worth talking about here, uh, the first one is Tectonic Purge, which is a aura of minus two to charge around the psyker within 12 inches. So. That's really good, you know, if your psyker's near, the, you're going to have to put your psyker near the front of the army and your opponent may be able to move around that, so I'm not entirely sure how good it is, but situationally it could be quite good, you know, if you've got him at the front of a, uh, a Death Star unit of Centurions, you know, it, it, it's not bad. The other one which I think is quite good is Fortify, which is regain D3 lost wounds. Um, if you couple that with an Apothecary, you're going to be getting Centurions back up and healing them. So... And it's only, I think it's only warp charge four. You know, you, you're never going to fail that. That that's so that that's good. The rest of it is, in my opinion, not worth taking a librarian for. Yeah, the only one really to mention is rack and ruin. Um, you roll nine d six, and on a five plus, you get a mortal wound. Um, and it's on a four plus versus a vehicle, but they've got to be wholly within terrain. Um, so you're going to be getting somewhere between three or four mortal wounds on a unit depending on what's going on so it's okay it you know it's not game breaking it doesn't offer any new mechanics to the game so in my opinion it's it's not that great okay so looking at the warlord traits there's two that i want to talk about the first one is in, indomitable um so you get you can't be wounded on a one two or three it's okay it's not amazing the other one is situational but actually in icc because you can change your warlord traits between games this one is really good if your opponent's bringing minus one ap shooting such as a bunch of aggressive which are going to be in tactical doctrine this could be really big um because essentially you, if you're in cover you ignore the minus one to hit ap for units around your warlord um yeah that that is situationally very very strong and definitely worth taking um, the other one um, I think it's worth noting is in the Vigilance Formation, you can get one which essentially counts, as, counts your units as being in cover around your Warlord as well. Um, it's not in this codex, but it's worth knowing about as well, because that is quite strong as well. Um, and the Crimson Fist, they've got quite a cool one. They've got a, you can get back up on a 4+, plus with D3 wounds remaining, refusing to die. Um, it's okay, there's no real combat monster, monsters that I can see in Crimson Fist, so... I don't really know how good that's going to be, and I certainly wouldn't put any builds around it. What do I think are the two ways of running this Imperial Fist list? Either you go pure, uh, and you stack up on that plus one to damage, because that is crazy. And when you're doing that, you're going to be running your 
you're going to be running your Devastators regardless of whether you go pure or not, your Centurion Devastators, but you're going to be running up everything which is high rate of fire, so anything which has assault cannons or heavy bolters on it, essentially, or those Sakaran Punishers. Um, you know, and you're going to be doing crazy amounts of damage with those. And that's going to give you really good um, good matchup versus Horde. It's going to give you a really good matchup versus Mech Infantry as well. Um, as Against uh, Mechanized lists as well. Now, the other thing you could do is you could run them as Salamanders. Now, this may well get nerfed, but if you run a pure infantry list of Imperial Fists and you put a Salamanders unit at the front of that army and you do the self-sacrifice stratagem. So you're not getting the plus one damage anymore, but the self-sacrifice stratagem for Salamanders essentially means that that unit, the closest, the your opponent has to target that unit of Salamanders unless there's another unit closer. And it doesn't say that other unit has to be Salamanders. So you could put a Salamanders character out of the line of sight and um, you're, you effectively you can make your entire army, uh, providing you string all within six, completely untargetable. And because you do it at the start of your opponent's shooting phase, they have to plan the whole, uh, the whole movement phase around that. And because you could put it on any single Salamanders un infantry character or infantry unit, th th there's no way they can, they can get around that. Um, so it's going to be it's, it's absolutely bonkers that and I think that that is going to make an insane level of durability now of course a few weeks after that Salamanders Codex has come out they may well nerf that to make that Salamanders unit only because otherwise that's going to be really really dumb right guys so that is the Imperial Fist review let me know what you think let me know what you think of these quicker reviews I've been kind of mindful that some of our codex reviews have been creeping into an hour hour and a half and I just wanted to condense this so hopefully you like what you see um, anyway leave a comment below let me know what you think about the codex let me know what you think about the review take care guys